Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Why AI. In this week's episode, I'm joined by Gary Henderson. Gary is a director of IT, Microsoft and Google certified educator and Apple teacher. Gary provides some brilliant insight to the world of AI and AI in education. I hope you enjoy this one. So, Gary, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Brilliant. Good to speak with you. Um, thank you for joining me today. So, um, Gary, if you if it's okay with you, are you all right to just sort of give the audience a, a, a bit of a, um, a a brief outline of, of what it is you do, um, you know, on a, a day to day basis? Um, yeah, no, no worries. Um, well, basically, I'm um, director of IT in Millfield, which is a, an independent school in Somerset. So um, a lot of my kind of day-to-day job is running the, the, the IT services team, you know, um, providing basically all of the IT side of things uh, to, to the school, you know, infrastructure, software, et cetera. I, mm. I also um, am involved in kind of the digital strategy side of things. Right, I see. Um, obviously, and, and that feeds into yeah. the AI, um, you know, um, artificial intelligence being one of the things that's a lot of discussion at the moment. Of course, um, I, absolutely. But, <laughs> a lot of my but, discussions. <laughs> yeah, it, indeed. But um, additionally to that, though, I'm also uh, an ambassador for the Association of Network Managers in Education. Right, And I, I, I am now um, editor-in-chief for EdTech Central. Fantastic. Right, okay. So, um, obviously, that's quite a few different roles that you've got, <laughs> to say the least. What does a, a day in the office look like for you? Um, well, it's always a really difficult question, that, because I mm. don't actually think there's such a thing as an average day in the office. Brilliant. It, it, that's what you it want, varies, isn't it? <laughs> it varies from day to day. You know, some, sometimes yeah. it's, it's, you know, strategy meetings. Sometimes mm. it's dealing with... Um, you know, IT issues. Sometimes it's you know having having discussions like this and sharing with other schools, or yeah. you know, some um, on a Friday afternoon, it's uh, sitting with students um, as part of uh, an esports comp- um, competition and wow. and club we've got that that happens within the school every week. Wow, esports! So that's yep. uh, gaming and 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 so and so on and so forth. Yeah, well, it's it, it. You know, the for me the the, the kind of big. Big things I'm interested in, um, and, and big discussion points here for me are the kind of digital citizenship side of things and working with staff and students on that, yeah. esports, and also cybersecurity and mm. AI. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So, in regards to uh, you, you mentioned just networking strategies, um, and and that sort of thing. Do you mind just expanding on that a little bit, just for people who don't quite, you know, the listeners who don't perhaps know exactly what that is, including myself a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> You know, obviously here, um, as I say, there's, the, on the, the kind of infrastructure and networking side, it's obviously making sure that, the, you know, I, I was once upon a time a, a teacher. Um, okay. you know, I've, I've been in education now for, I think, over 25 years wow. um, originally as a teacher. And I, I know that quite simply um, things have to work. You know, yeah. from a teacher, when you pick up a device or you pick up a tool, you know, whether it's an AI tool or, or whatever it is, um, it has to work. And if it doesn't work, whether you'll pick that tool up again, um, you might not um, mm, because okay. it impacts on teaching and learning. So, so that, you know, the, the kind of networking inf- infrastructure side of my role is about kind of making sure that, that it works. Mm, I see. Right. Okay. So in regards to things that um, you perhaps comparing your experiences of that, uh, you know, however many years ago, Perhaps before, um, before AI's sort of hit that. Obviously, AI has been around for a long time. I always say it in every episode that I have and, yep. and, and who I speak to, people think it's a very new thing. It's, it's not really. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Obviously, in regards to things like generative AI um, and ChatGPT and that sort of thing, um, that is quite new, uh, in, especially in how good it's become. Um, how frequently are you seeing things like that pop up in conversations um, in your day to day life? Is it something that is becoming quite more and more frequent? Yeah, I, I would definitely say it's it's become very kind of frequent. I mean, um, in in around the you know obviously you know GPT yeah Chat GPT you know came out um, mm-hmm. and became publicly available in kind of what was that, around November I think it was. Yes, yeah, and, so and we November. we started kind of talking about it. Um, in the November December period, and and uh, you know one of the things we took a, a decision, we we formed a working party at that point here, and I decided to 
actually start monitoring student use. You know, rather than, you know, some schools were talking about blocking use. Yes. What I decided, yeah. I wanted to see what was the kind of uptake among the students. So okay. we monitored it. And what we saw between kind of January, you know, at the point in January, beginning of January, new term, very, very few students were using it. But by kind of February, going into March, we were up to probably going on and a third of students were using it on a daily basis. Wow, that's a now, lot. That's a lot. Well, exactly. I've, I've never really heard the facts, the, the 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 facts and figures like that before. That is, you know, I've got a lovely little graph that includes, and you can clearly see wow. where the east, where we stopped being able to track during the Easter period when the kids were right. away. <laughs> oh, it just um, but you can see it going up and down, and and you know, there's a line of best fit, um, yeah. and it's quite a steep line. And as I say, and we we stopped kind of tracking it at March because by that point. Um, chat GPT was starting to appear in so many other different solutions and trying to track the different solutions. Bard was making an appearance and yes. it, it, therefore the numbers started to get quite muddy after that. Right, so we, we sort of stopped mean. at that point. I mean, I, I would I would estimate, you know, it's, it's difficult to estimate, but I would say we're definitely over half of students are using it regularly. Yeah. Now, some of it, it, it's worth noting the working party actually went out and talked to staff and it talked yeah. to students as well. Um, and therefore, a lot of the students were actually using it under staff direction. So wow. yeah, I know our, okay. our computing teacher was was saying to students, right, we're going to do some coding. I want you to use ChatGPT and I want you to code this manually. And let's do a compare and contrast who come up with the best solutions. You know, languages department looking at languages again, yeah. you know, right, I want you to translate this. Um, manually, and then somebody else will translate it using Absolutely. ChatGPT, and then we'll do a right. comparison to see. So, you know, some of it was, I think a lot of it was students using it organically, but then a lot of it was also, um, you know, under the instructions of, mm. of kind of teaching stuff. Would you say it had a positive impact on on teaching and learning when it's when it came around, or do you think it's it, again? I know that's obviously not a black and white. It's not a black and white scenario. You know, it's it's got its ups and downs in certain areas, uh, especially with how new uh, generative AI is. Do do you think overall, perhaps it had a, a more a positive or a negative impact? Um, I I think here it's had a positive impact, more yeah. of or more a positive impact than a negative impact yeah, because we we went to students quite early on and mm. said to students, right, you know. ChatGPT, you know, and other generative AI solutions are, are here. And we know you know about them. We know yeah. that you can use them. Um, and great, use them. You know, they're a great tool. If you, if you struggle getting started, it can help. If you mm. want to try and improve the readability of a piece of work, it can help. Yeah. All of that. But be aware of the risks, be aware of bias, be aware of the data protection risks, be aware mm. of, you know, um, uh, you know the the cyber security side of risks. Mm -hmm. be, be aware of that. So, I think that framed it that we were as a school viewing it positively. I I remember walking into I was walking into an English lesson and there was a student at the back working away, and I, I glanced at his iPad um, and he was using ChatGPT. Now wow. it, right. and this was the, this was I think in probably late January. Right, so first, quite early as it as it began. His first reaction was to sort of hide his iPad, and I'm like, no, right. no. The, you don't need to hide it. If you're using that tool, well done. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, are you using that with the permission of the teacher or are you trying right. to pass that off as your own work? That's that where maybe yeah. that's that's where it gets a bit great. But yes. the, using ChatGPT, using BARD, using any of the generative AI tools, it, it there's nothing wrong with that. You've just yeah. got to use them for the right reasons and the right purposes. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose that comes in uh, to, towards the teaching and, and sort of it being taught correctly and not being demonized. And it sounds like that's that, you know, it, that's the correct well, way to go almost. I, th I think, you know, th there's another point I, I've made um, whenever I've talked about it. And the answer is that we're talking about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing as if we as if we can put, you know, the, the, the rabbit back in the hat. Yeah, it's yeah. It's it's here already. It's here and, already, yeah. And you know, even even if your school decides to bury, you know, if a school decides to bury its head in, in the sand and say, right, we're not using it, we're banning it, etc., 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 the students go home and they're going to use it, yeah. and they're going to they're either going to stick the files, you know, from the stuff they create, they're going to stick them in Office three six five or Google so they can get them into school or bring it in in a USB mm, stick absolutely. if they are supported, or they'll bring it, you know, they'll they'll just have it on their phone and copy yeah. it out. It's, yeah. it's going to get used. And it's not just students. It's also teaching staff. 
you know, yeah. if, if you've not thought about it, your teaching staff are already using it. You know, whether yeah. it's to, yeah. to to do lesson planning or, or to create a scheme of work, or maybe even to to help writing parental reports. Um, there will be at least in every school, there will be at least a percentage of staff that are using it independent mm -hmm. of whether the school mm -hmm. has actually considered, you know, AI and generative yeah, AI yeah. or not. So it's it's almost a little bit hypocritical if you to slap the the, the iPad out of the students' hands to to not let them let them use ChatGPT when the teachers, like you say, more than likely are. Well, um, I, I see the the key thing down there is down to the usage. You know, it, it's yeah. using it appropriately, and if the students are using it appropriately, and equally, teachers could use it inappropriately. You know. Of course. Yeah, there's, there's, there's very, very, it's, it's a very, uh, you know, wide. So I suppose it's, it's diff It's a difficult thing to talk about in such a, a, a sort of black and white sense of the questions I'm asking you and your opinions. It's, you know, it is, it is a bit of a because there's so many intricacies, especially again with how new it is. I, I mean, one of the things that, again, you know, talking about that kind of you know, the gray scaleness of it, I, mm. I put it as a balance. In the, yeah. Uh, um, there was an event I spoke at recently, um, um, and and I talked about you know risk appetite. Um, okay. On one on one hand, you've got all of the all of the benefits of generative AI. Yeah. But if I make use of all of the benefits, I need to accept the risks and challenges that go with it. On the other side, I've got I I just ban it, ignore it, don't use it, mm -hmm. prohibit it, and then I I protect myself from the risks. And the answer, you know, the, the thing I'd say to any school, every school has to consider AI. And the first thing you need to decide is where do you stand? Where's your risk appetite? Are you up, you know, towards the, I want to use all the benefits. This could help with workload. This could help with student creativity, you know, democratize creativity. Mm. But I'm willing, I'm aware and willing to take on the risks. Or are you down the other end? Or, or are you in the middle? You know, we, where do you, because it's a continuum. It is not black and white. No, absolutely not. And it, would you say from the, so you you were mentioned mentioned just then, a, a, events that you spoke at. Can you just talk a little bit more of that? What was that based around? What was the the the, the sort of the key points of, of that? Um, well, I mean, one of the, the ones recently, it was just the, just the, the other week, was a, an Embracing AI event. Um, right, with, okay. Uh, it was elementary technology and the association of network managers and education sort of ran the event um and i mean it, it was really really good we we sort of looked at the, the kind of benefits of it and uh, there was actually some uh, really good sessions in the afternoon because it was very much about actually practically um getting the attendees and that this included you know some it people it right. included some senior leaders actually practically experimenting with generative ai tools so right, actually, okay. you know, create it using things like Midjourney or Canva yeah. or, or ChatGPT to maybe yeah. create some images as stimulus for lessons or to create a policy document or to, to revise a document or and, and actually being quite practical, which was quite unusual from the conferences I've attended, actually get, getting people with hands on. It's, it's yeah, quite unusual. I, from what I've seen in, a, you know, the... the um networks that I follow in regards to sort of you know social media um whenever events are spoken about it always seems quite you know theoretical and 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 someone solely speaking and, and guiding it and rather than a, like the interaction that sounds quite like it'd be quite I helpful I, I mean you know I, I I also spoke at one a little bit you know a good few weeks back actually and it was more and you know when I spoke at, at, it was a VWV event, and it, I split it into two bits. You know, the AI tools are here today. We can use yeah. them, you know. So, you know, as I say in this, you know, here in Millfield, we've got computing and IT contrasting, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, um, uh, generative AI created code versus, you know, human created code. Yes. You know, we've right, got okay. our, our AI policy was written with the help of AI. You know, doesn't wow. that sound sensible? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, our, our HR department were looking at, um, you know, some of their policy documents and trying to simplify it for people. So what did they do? Like feed it into generative AI. So there's yeah. a lot that you can already do practically mm. today. Mm. You know, not 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 thinking to the future today. Um, when you start thinking of, to the future, it does get a little bit more uncertain. You know, I, I, and one of the things um, I, I used... Uh, there was a, a survey of 300 and odd so-called AI experts. And I'm, I, I would right. question if there's such a thing as an AI expert because it's yeah. also <laughs> very kind of new and evolving. But um, out of those experts, they were asked, 
when when you know when would when would there be a fifty percent chance of a, a, a um, artificial general intelligence existing? So that's an AI capable of human-like um, processing and, and human-like wow. tasks. And and the answer they came up with is um, around fifty percent of the people said it would be here within the next forty years. Um, and then if you go up to a 90% confidence rate, it goes out to 100 years. Right, and okay. So the one thing you can take from it, well, there's two things you take. I took from that particular kind of survey. One is that artificial general intelligence, the so-called experts think it will, almost all of them think it will happen. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. But they you. don't have a clue as to when. <laughs> Well, that's a bit you know, scary within itself isn't it some that of is them a little think bit. five years some of them think a hundred yeah. some of them think beyond a hundred years mm. that that is the one thing there is there's a lot of disagreement as to when that that next big development will happen and um, so that's the thing when you're when you're talking about the future and speculating whatever mm -hmm. you have to do so with a certain you know accepting a certain degree of uncertainty. uncertainty do you have any any of your own sort of opinions on that do you have, yeah, I, I mean, for me, one of the exciting, uh, you know, exciting places for this um, is in the kind of learning platform space. I, I, mm. I've always hated the kind of learning platforms, you know, sit, sit a student down at a computer and they work through materials. Never liked it because it's it's very much a one size fits all. But then you pair that with a, an AI chatbot that can say, oh, you got that wrong. Um, did you consider this? Yes. What about this? Well done, yeah. you've got that right. Thumbs up emoji. Mm. Um, you so compare it's, it's it. A personal tutor almost. It, exactly. And, it, mm. you know, you, you look at it and you think, you know, the, the ability to teach basic, the, you know, the, the, the fundamentals of maths, English, and science um, through these tools. And, and, you know, in a class, you might have 30 students. You know, so that's one teacher to 30. But this would be AI one to one. one and to one. it's one to one. 365 days a year mm. you know 24 hours a day yeah is there the potential that we could get those fundamental skills built so much quicker using these platforms now obviously that would have to be supported by the teach you know the, the teachers because then mm. you have to have I, i'm a strong believer that you know the, the technology tools are brilliant but we are we're human we're social animals yes. and therefore you you cannot underestimate the human side of things no. so you still need the teachers there but by using by using the ai tools could we make quicker progress with more students and also free up some of the teachers to concentrate on some of the things we've talked about for the for years like digital citizenship Absolutely. mental health and well-being and those kind of things mm. and and address some of the workload challenges that that are so often kind of discussed within education of course yeah i, I was you know just about to say it, the, the the workload is always i mean you know uh, so sort of every every teacher that I, I I've spoken to, um, it's always you know it, it all usually comes down to a, a the same kind of thing in in their outlooks on and the positivities the, the you know the positives of it the benefits of it and that is a massive one the, the workload always seems to because I mean I'm not a teacher myself so I can't I simply can't put myself in a, in a teacher's shoes in that regard. Well, I I look at it you know as I say um, you were talking about kind of you know technology over time you know in the kind of your your introduction. Um, yes. The other day I was watching Twitter and um, it, it popped up about how how old google was and i suddenly realized i qualified as a teacher before google even existed wow <laughs> which is a bit which is a bit concerning but you know how I, I especially with how much we uh you know it, google is in almost everywhere you're like you know it's in, it's in everything it's, it's what i go to straight straight away on my phone when i pick it up when i try to look for an answer so it's 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 unbelievable to think that it's it's you know very very new for how much it's relied on so yeah, that, if we're if we're following that same sort of format in the sense of generative AI um, and and things well, like GPT, I think what you fit, you know, what the data seems to indicate is is it you know the pace of change is speeding up, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I was I was looking at a graph looking at um, data created you know per year, and mm. it's exponential growth, you know, the, right. the amount of data created, and this is before generative AI. Yes. Now I can only speculate that. Or, or, or at least my my view on it would be that 
now that generative AI exists, I can create blog posts quicker. I can create um, other content quicker. I mean, I, I, you know, doing presentations for conferences, I can now create them quicker using Canva to flesh out the basics yeah. just to start with. Um, so if, if we had the exponential growth in data pre-generative AI, what does it look like post generative yeah. AI? And I can only assume that the steepness of, of those increases will just increase. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it sort of leads me on to my, my next kind of question for you, Gary, Do it, where is your, it, say if you were to get a map again, very, very, very um, sort of linear question, but <laughs> Where do you think, where, what do you think education looks like in the next 10 years? Where do you think um, an, an AI's <laughs> place in it? Do you think it's, do you think it looks completely different or do you think it's still a classroom, you know, um, a seat in plan, a teacher stood at the front of the class and, and, and there, and that's how it is. Or do you think it will be, do you think everything will change? It's, it's an interesting one because, mm. you know, that I think there is, I'd like to say that, you know, the AI has the potential to change it you know, education significantly. Okay, yeah. that's 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 what I'd like to see. Um, and, you know, things like, lear the, you know, the learning platforms that support it, things like, you know, why do you have to tr go through the traditional pathway of education? The UK, I'm going to do my GCSE, then I'm going to do my A-level, then I'm going to do my degree. Why yeah. do I need to do that? There's a, there's a lovely article I saw recently about the US. And if you wanted to get a place at Caltech, you had to do um, calculus. But mm -hmm. not all schools all offer calculus. They don't have the resources or the staffing. Um, so a lot of kids were basically, you know, prevented from going to Caltech because they couldn't get the qualification. Roll in Khan Academy and another platform. And now you can use these two online platforms to evidence your mastery of calculus. And Caltech will accept that where wow. you didn't have the ability to, to study it in school. So all of a sudden, you've got the potential for you know, other pathways through education, you know, whether, whether we'll see an up, you know, an uptake and in increase in micro credentials, you know, why, why study a two year course, um, you know, GCSE maths, when actually I could do maybe a, a, a three week um, algebra course, and, yes. and it's accredited, and a three right. week, you know, something else, and much, much smaller, more micro qualifications, yeah. whether that will happen. I think, though, that, I think that's the, there's definitely the potential for that. But mm. on the flip side of that, um, if you were to look at a classroom today mm -hmm. and compare it to a classroom a hundred years ago, yeah, um, just take the books away and put an iPad or a, a laptop, and that's about they're still in front of the class. Mm -hmm. The chalkboard is now a, a digital display panel, yeah, and but but a lot of things haven't changed. So I think. You know, there is a challenge in, in how we um, bring about change within education. So the tools are there to, to support it. But, but as I say, education is slow to change. Now, yeah. but the one thing I'd, I'd say that relates to that, if we look at the pandemic, the pandemic provided a catalyst that, that pushed past the reluctance for change. And all of a sudden, mm. schools were on. You know, one you're moving to one to one programs. They were moving to digital resources and online and and the likes. Digital classrooms the, and all. Yeah, the, the question is, is AI sufficiently? You know, is, is it a, a big enough catalyst to do the same again and mm. overcome the the reluctance for change? Mm. Um, it's it, it's interesting that this, this also highlights one of the challenges I think with AI. And it's 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 not a new challenge. It's been around for years. It's the digital divide. Yeah, you know, absolutely. The digital divide was always a problem. You know, those that had technology, those that did not, whether it's bandwidth, support, devices. Yeah. Now you've got layered on top of that, you know, bandwidth, support, devices. Now you've got AI. Yeah. Those that will have access to it and schools that are embracing it and those that will not have access to it or not even have the basic technology to be able to access it. Um, I think there's a danger the digital divide could be seen to to you know be 
be widened. Mm. Um, I mean, yes, yeah, absolutely. Like almost amplified to what it's already, what it already is. Obviously, it will always exist. It's probably you know, it's all, it's all, it always has existed to uh, you know, poverty stricken areas and 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 even on a on a global global scale. It's it's also going to be very interesting to see. Sorry, I interrupted you. I carry on. <laughs> I, I think one of the challenges there is the investment. You know, it, yeah. it's it's. Um, you know, where is the investment for the technology um, going to come from? And I think, you know, as, as I alluded to kind of earlier on, um, we, we've, we've talked in schools about digital citizenship for years, mm. but yet the actual teaching of digital citizenship is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a computing curriculum. Um, and that assumes that the kids are doing computing, you know, um, you know beyond year nine. Um, that we need we need more you know more needs to be more time needs to be spent on mm -hmm. teaching about that digital citizenship so you yeah. need the investment in the kit you need investment in the time coverage time. of digital you know um digital citizenship and maybe ai can be part of the help here because if ai can can make us more efficient mm -hmm. in some of the teaching or some of the course objects maybe we can have more of the discussions we need regarding things like you know cyber security and digital citizenship yeah br brilliant i mean it's, it's it's very interesting to get uh, you know your insight on it because you you are in quite a, a few different areas you know of it and speaking i imagine you speak to speak to people with different views on it you know people who know lots about it experts <laughs> as, we, as we said if they exist <laughs> if they exist um and also people who 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 know very little about it um so it's it's interesting to get to get your insight on it. Do you have um just to going on a bit of a, a mundane a mundane one here? Just because I like it to be relatively educational for perhaps our listeners and and educators who know absolutely nothing about it. Is there any any tool specifically that you you would you know say use if if when you're just starting out with AI or you know just <laughs> to start using it? Um. <sighs> The thing is, there are that many different tools out there, you know, and I I think if there was one tool, you know, if I was forced to go with one tool, I'd probably go back to where all the hoo-ha began, which is ChatGPT, Chat GPT, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, one of the things about a lot of the tools that have come out since then is yeah. that, they're, you know, I think, I can't remember who it was that said that ChatGPT was a terrible tool. <laughs> and and the the point is that it actually does it, it does great things, but from a user yeah. interface point of view, it's dreadful. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. I and that's that. a lot of the tools that have come out since then are just basically nice skins, you mm. know, um, user interfaces that sit on top of ChatGPT to make it a bit easier. And there are so yeah. many of them, you know, specifically for education out there. I think the the big thing I would say, you know, ChatGPT maybe have a bit of an experiment there. The the other thing would be you know get on you know have a look at social media. You know there, there are loads of people on LinkedIn, you know X or Twitter, or whichever you want to call it, <laughs> sharing sharing resources. You know yeah, have a look at have a look at those resources that, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's loads of people already doing things and sharing about it. You know, have mm -hmm. you tried this within maths? You know, here is a sample of 15 really useful prompts. Um, here is, here is a, a, a way to create useful, um, uh, uh, videos that yeah. can be used to stimulate discussion within an English class. There's right, okay. loads of resources already out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, 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 again a very interesting insight <laughs> to, to to the the whole topic which is a very very broad one which unfortunately we don't have <laughs> much more time to discuss do you uh just just as a sort of um you know closing statement to to the audience do you have anything that you'd like to say any advice that you'd like to impart uh, anything like that yeah that, I, I, well you know as, as i said earlier i think you know the, the tools are here you know mm -hmm. and students and staff are using them so i i think um every school has to decide on what its appetite is from there you then have to put your guide rails get a policy and that you know there's there's a lovely um uh, sample template policy that mark anderson you know it ict yes. evangelist and uh, laura knight put together yeah, um so brilliant. you know get a policy in place and then after that you know kind of talk to the staff talk to the students about it um i think the big thing is you know experiment it's here people are going to be using it i think in the, the recent event um darren white um was, was one of the other uh, speakers at the, the, the embracing yes, ai event and I've he met said darren, met darren before yeah 
Yeah, he said, and I think he sums it up beautifully. So that's that's what I'd finish on. He said, "Be bold, but be responsible," and I think that's that sums it up. Brilliant. Get out there and experiment, but do so being aware of the risks and challenges, and make sure that students and staff are equally aware of the risks and challenges. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Gary. I appreciate you joining me today. Um, we'll we'll do it again some other time. Brilliant. Been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers, Gary.